So ever since starting my first impression series, I started browsing the site called Product Hunt a little bit more. And all this is is an aggregator site that shows all of these new and upcoming apps for both their creators and also users to discuss. And a few things came to my attention. First, I realized that Google launched its own competition to apps like Trello and Airtable with Google Tables. Todoist also launched Todoist Board, which again looks a lot like Trello's Kanban boards. And on top of all of that, when I was researching my Notion video, I realized that Trello is also not end-to-end -end encrypted. So all of these things came together and made me wonder, what does this mean for Trello? And with all of this competition out there, how will Trello distinguish itself and remain on top? So it has been one and a half years since I've used Trello, so I wanted to first revisit it and evaluate the pros and cons of this app. And then I wanted to take a look at all of these new options that are out there and see if they have what it takes to dethrone Trello from its top position. And I also want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. More on that in a little bit, but for now, let's get to the video. Editing Harshibar here. I know I convinced a lot of you to use Notion, but I think it's important for me to point out that Notion has a lot of features that not everyone needs. And to be honest, unless you need to keep track of a knowledge base, Notion isn't absolutely necessary. There are lots of alternatives to help you keep track of your day-to-day -day life. And if I wasn't running this YouTube channel and starting my consulting company, I'd definitely start looking into something simpler, like Trello or any of these newer alternatives, which is why I'm making this video. So first I want to just open up Trello and see what it looks like since it has been so many months. And the first time that I used Trello, it was actually the first time I had used or even heard of Kanban boards. And that concept itself is actually very powerful. It can be used for a lot of things like errands or weekly to-do lists or long-term project planning or feature requests for an app. So the fact that Trello is built upon this amazing organizational structure of Kanban boards makes it really, really powerful. And also because the boards can be customized a lot, both in terms of the design, but also like the name of the columns and what can be stored in a card and all of those different things, it actually can be pretty powerful if you know how to set it up correctly. Besides that, I remember that when I was using Trello and even when I revisited it very briefly a few months ago, I really liked its mobile app support. With Trello, if I have a random idea that I want to jot down or some task that I just completed, I can easily just whip up my phone and just mark it as complete. But for me, it wasn't the best option for a few reasons. Looking back at this again, I remember that my main complaint actually was just that it's kind of ugly, which if I'm going to be using this app every single day for hours, I want it to be pleasing to look at. One thing that I've noticed that irks me a little bit more is the fact that a lot of the interesting features that make this app even more powerful, which are called, I believe, power ups, are actually not free. So things like integrations with Google Drive or Gmail or Slack or custom fields or math equations, all of those things are called power ups, which are limited in the free plan to I think like one or two. And as I mentioned before, from my recent video, I learned that Trello is also not end to end encrypted. And that's not necessarily a deal breaker, but if the security of an app is not top notch, then I would want everything else about the app to be absolutely perfect. So that's Trello. It hasn't changed a lot since I used the last time, but I'm excited to see what all of these new alternatives are and if any of them could actually be better or maybe make me want to switch. And I know I'm always on the search for ways to optimize my productivity and learning, which is why I started to explore Skillshare, which happens to be the lovely sponsor of today's video. Whether you're looking to launch a side hustle or want to explore a new hobby or push your creative boundaries, Skillshare has something for everyone. I know for me, there were so many topics to pick from, from productivity to filmmaking to business development. Heck, they even have classes on dog psychology and plant care. And the great thing is Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads so you can stay focused on what really matters. And all of that is for less than $10 a month. 
So if you want to try out a class for yourself, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. So check out Skillshare if you haven't already, and thank you again for supporting my channel. And now back to the video. So one of the main problems that productivity apps can face is that their main feature can be copied by their competition. And with Trello, that happened with two culprits, Google and Todoist. So I can tell that Google Table is being marketed towards corporations or teams because of all these categories they've got here. And that makes sense because even when I was working at my last startup, we used Google Suite for a lot of our workflow. So here is Google's take on the Kanban board. And if we click each card, we can see that it is kind of similar to Trello's card UI. Hello. Then if this is a Kanban board, we can drag and drop. So they do have a few bots that you can use for free, which again is nice because this is Google. You can probably integrate it with your email or your calendar. So everything is in one place. So TBH, it makes sense that Google has built this because a lot of companies have been basically hacking around things like Google Sheets to make things like these product roadmaps or OKRs or sprint schedules and stuff like that. So of course, Trello must have seen something like this coming because big companies, especially Google, are known for taking these ideas and adapting it into their existing software. But I think Google Tables does not pose a serious threat to Trello. First, <laughs> this is actually uglier than Trello, at least as of now. I think also from a security standpoint, if we are worried about big companies like Google and Facebook having access to your data, then of course relying more heavily on this for say your own personal to-do list and storing your own personal information could be kind of risky. So I think this has a lot of potential to become a pretty strong contender down the line. But as of now, I think Google knows its focused demographic and does not pose too big of a threat to Trello. So the other thing I wanted to take a look at is Todoist. So I also used this when I was working for like my daily to-do lists, but now with this Kanban feature, it basically is a lot more powerful. And this actually has changed a lot since the last time I used it, which is nice to see. So with the boards, all I did is took one to-do list and made it into multiple columns. But I think the good thing for Trello is that Todoist will always be known as a to-do list app. So this is great for their users, but probably won't draw people either away from Trello or to Todoist versus Trello. And of course, there are a lot of apps that are starting to adapt the Kanban feature like Notion and Taskade. So it is kind of becoming the standard, which is definitely a good thing because as I said, Kanban is a really nice methodology for organizing your ideas and tasks. So it seems like Zenkit is the answer to a lot of the complaints that I had with Trello. First of all, from Product Hunt, I learned that Zenkit has a lot of those features that are power-ups in Trello here for free. Also, in my opinion, I find that Zenkit is a lot more beautiful to look at and has just a more up-to-date design. So here's a sample board and it does look very similar to Trello and kind of like Notion, you can add multiple views for the same information. It's just that everything is focused on the Kanban thing. It's actually, it's actually pretty nice. So apps like Zenkit are a pretty big threat to Trello just because it takes all the functionality of Trello and makes it first free and also a lot more powerful and beautiful. I don't know if it's enough for people to switch from one to the other, but if you are a new user and are comparing both, I would at least personally prefer Zenkit over Trello. And the last app I want to talk about is called Stacks, which actually has a pretty similar logo to Trello. And initially I didn't even want to talk about this one because it seemed kind of boring, but I realized one really important thing that makes this quite noteworthy. And that is the fact that this is self-hosted. So just like how Obsidian works, basically all of your data in Stacks is stored on your local device, which means it doesn't go to the cloud. And because of that, a lot of the security risks 
with cloud-based apps like Notion and Trello and pretty much everything are eliminated. Of course, this means that if something happens to your device and you don't have a good backup, you're basically screwed, <laughs> but at least that's your fault and not someone else's fault. All right, so I think in terms of the UI and stuff, there actually isn't that much that is super different from Trello's. I would say it does look a lot cleaner still um, because all of this extra like junk is not cluttering the page. It's just here as little buttons. So I'm location, custom text checklist. Oh, hourly fee. Okay, that's cool, you're consulting. Nice. And this is actually pretty cool. You can see all your tasks at an overview like this um, based on, I think, the number of tasks you have and how much time you've spent. So yeah, I think this can also give Trello a run for its money because it has this huge benefit of being a lot more secure. So yeah, these last two are really interesting. I wanna spend more time playing with them because if they had mobile apps, I would be very convinced to use them in at least for some part of my workflow. But yeah, that is, that is it. Yogi, are you done throwing your tantrum? Yeah? Wanna say hello to your friends? So if you are looking into using Trello or want to find a better alternative, I think from all of these apps that I looked at today, the most noteworthy ones were Zenkit and Stacks. Um, and in my opinion, at least, I feel like they're very comparable, if not actually superior to Trello. For Zenkit, it's a lot more feature packed in its free model and just looks a lot better. And for Stacks, it's secure, which is enough to switch if you care about security. And in terms of the future, of Trello, I think my hypothesis was pretty correct in that they are in some trouble with all of this competition that is out there. And I think that they probably need to step it up a little bit just to keep up with all of this new competition around since the productivity app space is pretty booming right now. But otherwise, that is it for today's video. I know it's a lot more chill and laid back than the usual. I actually planned it like two hours ago. So hopefully you liked it. And I did want to thank Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. Again, the link is in the description if you want to try it out. But yeah, if you like this video, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you don't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Uh... Um, first of all, 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 <laughs> all right, let's do this fast.